Good evening everyone, it's Jeff and this is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. And I've just come on my nighttime slug hunt, bug hunt, stroke slug hunt. And look what I found. Aha! Slippery slimy public enemy number one. And that, my friends, is going to go onto the launch pad and it's going to be launched way over next door's garden but don't worry it's a farm I'm sure it'll be very happy there and I'm sure they don't mind we've got horses and cows and sheep a few slugs won't cause any problems so yeah at least it's not on any plants and one of the nice things about many orchids not all of them and in fact, pretty much all the plants in here, there aren't many that seem to mind the slugs. Or I should say, the slugs don't seem to be attracted to them. There's some, like the, like the dendrobium, some of the softer, softer leaved ones, um, they would be eaten. But a lot of the hard ones, the hard leaf ones, don't seem to care. Obviously they have other pests as well, um, but yeah, I better get that little critter before it does any more damage, or before it does any damage at all. I'll just leave it for one moment. Now all I've got on in here at the moment is the mouse hydro and nothing else, so you can see it's quite shady over here. I've had the mouse hydro on for uh, three hours, so from four o'clock, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I'll just come and have a little look, see if I can see anything. And look, it's quite dark down here. Uh, I'm going to have to use my torch in a minute. So there's nothing else. I've brought the Brugmansia over here into the light, started to drop a few leaves. I believe it can drop them all over winter, but it was looking so good, it was a shame. It was missing out on all the light action. I've also brought the Catleas as well. Put that big one on the floor. The flower's over on that one now. Oh, this gorgeous orange one that everybody loves. Uh, the flowers are beginning to fade now. I have lost one. Um, but it is still a fabulous colour. And everybody keeps asking me what it's called. Unfortunately, it's just a hybrid. Um, got it from Spiciesotics. Speciotics. Speciesotics. Spicesotics. Whatever it's called. And... I did try to show you this dendro, this dendro, this uh, Oncidium sherry baby the other day, but unfortunately, for some reason, which I can't quite fathom at the moment, um, quite a few of my videos, just think you get like about a five minute mark. I seem to get a like a, a freeze, two or three minute freeze, and I tried uploading them again, get the same thing. The 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 file that's being uploaded is fine. So I, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I have good upload and download uh, speeds and capacity on my broadband. But anyway, let's hope this doesn't happen. It doesn't seem to be happening with the um, with the shorter videos. And I do ramble, I know. So yeah, this looking brill. Can't really smell much. It's certainly not filling the greenhouse, but it's looking fantastic. I've waited long enough for it. Um, and this one is about to come out. Like I say, I expect get some sun on it, some real sun, not the mouse hydro. Uh, I've had this Oncidium Sherry Baby for about a year. Bought it from Thailand, would you believe? Uh, mail order. I think it was about fourteen, fifteen pounds, something like that, and then about seven pound delivery. Um, and I've nursed it through twelve months, and. Uh, I've been waiting for these blues for a long time. The spike, it started spiking round about, um, let me think, around about June time. And I thought I was gonna miss the flowers in August when I was away on my holidays. It looked so close to flowering at that point. And uh, <laughs> here we are, several months later, and it's just come out now. I mean, it looks fantastic, scent or not. Uh, so what I have to do now is wait for the flowers to die down, which I hope it's going to be a while off yet, and then 
have a look at it and see if it needs repotting. I don't think it does. It seems quite happy, but I'll have a, I'll have a close look at it. Um, I'll just show you while I'm here. Cinnamon Twinkle, looking even better now under these bright lights. I think already they seem to be happier. You can just you can feel them photosynthesizing. It's in the uh, the uh, plum area, enjoying the bit of light. The sweet sugar is nearly out, about to to burst forth. Again, I've been waiting a year for that. The Miltonia spectabilis doesn't seem to have suffered much from its rough treatment the other day. Um, what else? Got the Mastervalia ignea. These seem to do really well for me for whatever reason. I think I've just got that, the right climate for them. Uh, I know they were supposed to be tough to, to cope with, but I'm not finding that bloomed fantastically well twice for me and I've only had it just over a year. I'm keeping my BDI on that slug, it's not going anywhere. And again I keep reading about the Miltoniopsis, how really hard they are, but despite these, you can see the concertina leaves, they are they're coming up. It's you know it's started regrowing again since I lost all the roots and you can just see uh, I can zoom in there, see that white thing there, that's a new root. So it has begun to root again. And uh, despite, you know, the, the, the kind of folklore on it saying, oh, they've got to be kept damp, got to be kept damp. Well, mine doesn't. <laughs> mine, mine wants to dry out. Well, not completely dry out, but it certainly doesn't want water on it when it's clearly already wet. Um, it wants to, it wants time. And I'm, I'm watering that about once every 10 days. Not even, you know, it might even be once every two weeks. Uh, Pelagonium coming out, completely out of season, but that's fine, quite happy with that. The, even, you know, it wasn't probably just over a week maybe, a couple of weeks since I did the video on streps. Um, they are beginning to look quite yellow now, that they've, they've flowered the hearts off. Um, I'll just come over to these especially. You can see over here, see how yellow those leaves are going now. They're just really ready for a rest. Uh, they want a good tidy up. I'm very tempted to cut all the flowers off. And I mean, like this one, for example, it's only in an eight inch pot. Um, it's struggled all year in that, and I really need to start repotting them up. So I'm gonna do a video on that. This tropical fern in the corner, much better since it's been in that tray down there. Much happier. Uh, what else have we got? Cyclamen looking fantastic. Some of these are scented as well. I mean, I know they're not tropical, but they, they fit in, don't they? They just they just fit in with the look of the place. So yeah, I'm really happy with those. And then the other big plum area, uh, Rachel at gardening at Duenza pointed out to me, as one or two others did, that they do they can lose the leaves in uh, a cooler climate. One, they should be okay. It's definitely at 12 degrees. I mean, I've got it at the moment. I'm trying to move the camera much more slower. Camera, well, it's a phone. I'm trying to move it much more slowly. I mean, nearly made myself seasick looking at some of the other videos. Can you see the the bottom temperature is set at 15.4 degrees C, which seems a very odd temperature to set it at. But basically, that's the min minimum I can get away with. Because up here, you can see overnight minimums have been down to 12.9. I actually set that, reset it this morning. So overnight, it's been going down to 12, about 12.1, 12.2 in that corner. Now, I don't know how accurate it is, but um, it's really just me making an attempt to, to make sure nothing goes below 12. Now, whether I'll be able to sustain it, you know, money-wise, I don't know. We'll see. At the moment, you know, you've seen I'm keeping a really close eye on the uh, the figures. I'm going to do a like a kind of a deep dive into all the controls that I use. I know lots of you have already got these things set up, but there might be one or two things that I've got that other people haven't, or maybe anybody new is looking at. So I'm going to do a deep dive on that. I'm going to do a spotlight on tropical ferns. 
I'm going to have to look up some information, but I will do some. I'll get all the tropical ferns together and have a look at them and see what we can find out about them, see what we can discuss. That'll be interesting. Uh, I've not mentioned this one. I don't think I've actually shown this one. Just move you up. Up, 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 up. I'm not sure. I can't remember. That one is its a species. I think I might have done, actually. But it's still looking good. It's worth looking at. Sologenis speciosa. Um, I'm guessing that means it's a species. <laughs> I put it up there just because, because of the way they hang down. You can see them better looking up at them. So it seems much happier up there, and I'm much happier to look at it. It's kind of changed colour. Like that one's quite dark, and that one's quite brown, lighter brown. So, yeah, that's it for now. Just a very quick update. Goodness knows what I'm going to call this one. But, um, oh, don't forget my slug. No, it does. It's, look, it's still uh, quite happy there. It doesn't seem to be searching out. I think it's just having a drink. But it's going to go on a. Uh, um, it's first flight in a few moments. It's funny, I'm, I'm really keen on looking after bugs and insects and wildlife and but for some reason slugs don't seem to fit that criteria. <laughs> anyway, that's it for now. Just another quick update and uh, you know the drill. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and I shall see you on the next one. Bye.